had a question, a uh, private message, a brother wrote me a question and he said, is it possible who, for somebody who's been turned over to a reprobate mind, is, does that mean that they're done, that they can't get saved after that? Um, is it possible that somebody that's been turned over a reprobate mind could eventually get saved? Well, my answer to that is quite simple. There's a test um, that anybody can do that's lost um, to see whether or not they can be saved. It's very simple. You go like this, you hold up your hand, make sure the palm is facing away from you, or the back of your hand, excuse me, the palm is facing towards you. And then you go like this, like that, you breathe out. If you feel air coming out of your lungs, you can still be saved. Okay? Um, anybody that's alive can be saved. The unpardonable sin, if you study the thing out, Jesus says, they won't be forgiven them in this life, or excuse me, in this world or the world to come. It's not some kind of a thing that's even occurring right now, right? They were blaspheming. They were saying that the Holy Spirit that was in Jesus was a devil. And Jesus is saying, hey, you can attack me, but don't attack the Holy Spirit. That's within me, all right? Um, that was what was going on. Why? Because the Godhead was right there physically present on the earth when Jesus Christ was walking around, okay? We have... We're dealing with flesh and Holy Spirit sometimes speak through you. Sometimes it's your flesh. There's that struggle there. Jesus Christ didn't have that struggle. Okay? Yes, he had a body of flesh. Yes, he obviously when he died on the cross, there was blood that came out. He felt pain. But his flesh was sinless. He never sinned. So for them to attack him, he's saying, well, you, you're ignorant. You don't, you know, he's, what's he say on the cross? Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Okay? They didn't understand who he was, but he was saying everything that came out of the mouth of Jesus Christ was Holy Spirit inspired. Why? Because he's God. <laughs> understand? All right? But the question comes up, this thing about the reprobate, God will turn him over to a reprobate mind. And then, you know, a lot of the people are trying to teach, God's done with them at that point in time. Once you get turned over to a reprobate mind, you're finished. Uh, I don't think so. Let's look at the passage where this appears. Romans chapter 1, beginning in verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Okay? Stop right there. That, verse 19, that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. You cannot tell me that anybody out there that walks around in nature or whatever else can truly say this all happened by a random accident. I realize people have been through so much brainwashing over the years since evolution, you know, came out and, and whatever. They've been through so much brainwashing that they've just, you know, it gets repeated so often that they just go, oh, you know, they don't really question it much. But the whole thing is, this book right here, our Bible says, you know, the uh, that which may be known of God is manifest in them. Okay? For God hath showed it unto them. God will communicate with every man, woman, and child that's ever been created. God will communicate with them, and at some point in time, He will reveal in their mind that's created that could not have evolved everybody gets that opportunity again there's nobody innocent in hell remember that at some point in time God will speak to every man and woman and child and say there is a God and it's through nature that they see that and you know this is nature your hand your eye the complexity of your body. You can understand, hey, there's no way that I could have been just happened as a random accident, you know, if you go back in the first man. Not going to happen. But why do they reject what God is manifesting in them, saying there is a God? Why do they reject it? Verse 21, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. 
Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Yeah. It's very interesting. You look at the progression of things there. They, you know, uh, verse 21, uh, that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful. Okay? They're not thankful for what God did for the life that He's given them. They're unthankful. They're ungrateful. They become vain in their imaginations. They start to think of things that are just stupid nonsense. I, th I wonder if the first man that just created 20 billion years ago or whatever, you know, foolish, stupid nonsense. Their foolish heart was darkened. And what do they do after that happens? Professing themselves to be wise, they become fools. They became fools, it says. But you become a fool when you become, oh, I'm wise, I'm a PhD, you know, and, and all this other stuff. Uh-huh. They changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. They start to worship nature. Instead of seeing nature and saying, wow, there must be a God, they say, wow, nature's so amazing. Isn't this great how it evolved? They remove God from the equation. And what happens? God gives them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their hearts. To do what? To dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Sex perversion. Let's continue reading. Verse 25. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Did you know that the level of sin, sin and wickedness that goes above sex perversion is scripture perversion? So what, where did you get that? How did you hear that? It's right there in your text. Read it. Verse 24. Gives them up to uncleanness, to their lusts. Verse 25, they changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Did you know that there are preachers out there that attack this King James Bible and they call themselves most reverend? But back in the book of Psalms, God says, holy and reverend is His name. God's, one of God's titles is reverend. And yet there are preachers and priests and things out there that call themselves most reverend. Do you ever think about that? I mean, did Jesus have a PhD? A THD? THM? Dr. Jesus. You know. Nope. They're giving themselves titles. Why? Because they want people to worship them. Yeah. Isn't that something? Educated scholars who decide that, actually, this is a good translation, but um, I can show you where the errors are at. And, and um, you know, the Texas Receptus was a nice attempt, but they didn't have the materials. Uh, uh, you know, they're actually in wickedness. They're above the level of a sex pervert. Isn't that interesting? Verse 26. For this calls... You go through the progression there. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. You know, it's so funny. I've, I've seen this thing, you know, they, they try to take animals and they stick them in confinement, you know, in a zoo and they go, look, there's two male chimpanzees, you know, hugging each other. That proves that sodomy is, you know, legitimate. And they, <laughs> okay, I, I remember seeing a thing that uh, sometimes turtles will... A male turtle will mount a, another male turtle and, you know, start trying to breed. And, and they, whoops, sorry about that. Or frogs, I think, or do it or whatever else. They're in confinement, okay? <laughs> All right, a lot of times there. And it's not like they're, you know, continuing to do these things and whatever else. I mean, they're just so desperate to prove that sodomy is somehow fine and, and acceptable and everything else. And again, I don't hate sodomites, okay? I know, I know people that were into sodomy and that got saved and they're like, I want out of that wicked lifestyle. Right? It's a wicked lifestyle. It's destructive. Sex perversion is destructive. It's not something that you're going to be happy in. But let's continue here. Verse 27, And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burn in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meat. Okay? Now remember, what did we read up here in verse 24? Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. 
Sex perversion. Okay? See, sex perversion. What's it followed by? Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. So, sex perversion is before scripture perversion. You understand? So, verse 26 and 27, you see sex perversion. Look at verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. You see it? Verse 28 lines up with verse 25. Verse 24 goes along with 26 and 27. The progression there. Sex perversion, which leads to scripture perversion. And even as, and, and let me just say this too, by the way, a lot of the, you know, new versions, Catholics, you know, and stuff involved with those Catholic priests and things. Yeah, they're involved in all kinds of sex perversion. And even knowing about sex perversion, they're covering up and stuff like this. Like this cardinal from Australia here recently that, uh, you know, that it came out, he was molesting children and the Pope is like, oh, we're just going to ship him over here, or whatever, covering it up. They do it all the time in the Catholic Church. And they're the biggest perverters of scripture out there. Don't even believe in the scriptures, I mean, as the final authority. So what do you expect? Verse 28, And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. All right? And see, here's how they'll do it. Here's how a lot of the Bathics and things will do this. They'll say, well, see, the Sodomites here, God gives them over to a reprobate mind. Well, in some ways that's true, but... In context, it says, even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. It's talking about educated people. Atheists are given over to a reprobate mind. And that atheist might be totally straight. Might never have been into sodomy and might have, or gay lifestyle or whatever else. They could be totally straight. But they don't want to retain God in their knowledge. They have a reprobate mind. Context, brethren. You have to understand the context of what's going on here. This verse is not saying... That anybody who is gay or lesbian or whatever else, they can't get saved. That's not at all what the scripture is saying. And these people are taking that, they're lying about this whole thing. But let's continue here. Let's look at the things that, uh, to do those things which are not convenient. They're turned over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. So these things that are listed here must all be about gay people, right? No. Let's look at this. Verse 29, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, dis disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful. Now you can certainly apply some of those to some of these really wicked sodomites out there and things that just you know, or trying to shut down anybody that dissents, you know, with their lifestyle and, and stuff. I understand that. But there's a lot of stuff in that list there that uh, straight, you know, regular people do. How about the uh, whisperers, people that gossip? That's what it's talking about. There's not saying, you know, somebody says, hey, could you turn the TV down? Or you know, no, 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 no. Whisperers, people say, did you hear about so-and-so? You know, did you hear what they did? Well, hi, how are you doing? You know, stuff like that. Whispers. That's somebody that's been turned over to a reprobate mind. Hmm. Verse 32. Who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Here's another interesting part of it. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Well, you know, I'm not uh, gay or whatever. Do you watch people on TV that are? Do you laugh about that sin and things? Hmm. Interesting. But now the question is, is it possible who, for somebody that God just says, okay, you just, you do what you want. You know, their conscience, they just say, okay, I, I'm just going to sear my conscience. And God says, yeah, go ahead. You just go on and do what you want. Is it possible for that person to come back and get saved? Absolutely. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. First Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 through 11. You need to call 911 in your Bible. There you go. Verse 9. 
Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate. King James Bible word, one of your words there, for men that act like sissies, which would be sodomites. You know, men that act like women, I'll say it that way, be more accurate. Nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. Here we go. These are things that line up with what we saw over there in Romans chapter 1. There's no question about that. Look what Paul says in verse 11. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. They were into those things. They were turned over to a reprobate mind, but they got back. They came back to the Lord. You know, it's kind of like a, a child sometimes. You know, just give you a little example. Uh, this morning, got up and everything, and, and um, we were in the bedroom, and, and uh, my son, have, he's going to be three years old here before real long, but he was jumping up and down on the bed, and I kept saying, Son, don't get near the edge of the bed. You're going to fall. You're going to go down on the floor and stuff, a hard floor. Don't, don't get near the edge of the bed. Well, you know, he kept, you know, he'd bounce and stuff, jumping up and down on the bed, and he'd everything else, and then he'd get a little bit closer, and, and finally I didn't see it, you know, and, and uh, he got over towards the edge of the bed. I didn't say anything because I was paying attention to something else. And sure enough, boom, down he went, wham, hit on the floor. Well, then I said, sorry, you're not my son anymore. <laughs> see, I stopped warning him, and it, he fell down and got hurt. But do you think I said, I'm not going to comfort you because you messed up? No, of course not. And I know, you know, lost people are not, you know, technically children of the Lord. I understand that. But the point is, you get God, He's trying to, you know, He's manifesting certain things. He's showing certain things to lost people and saying, I exist. I'm real. Look at nature. Look at this. Look at that. Look at yourself. Look at, be thankful for what I do for you. Hey, here's the Bible. You know, you're not wise. <laughs> If you're, if you're rejecting this book, you know, don't change the truth of God into a lie. All the things we read over in Romans chapter 1. And that person just goes, oh, I'm just going to do my own thing. The Lord says, okay, go ahead, do it. And by the way, after my son got up and he was crying and everything else, we comforted him. He was all right. You know, I think the floor gets hurt more you know, when it, his head hits it. <laughs> but you know, after he got up, do you think he did it again? No. He avoided the edge of the bed. And you know what? Sometimes God will do that with a sinner. He'll manifest himself to them and he'll say, hey, look at this and look at that and stuff. And they'll, they'll see a gospel tract laying someplace and they read it or they hear the gospel or they'll hear Christian singing or they'll hear something. They'll see something and they go, eh, I'm not going to pay attention. And what happens is they fall and they get messed up. And God lets them... Just be an irreprobate reprobate mind for a while. And they just go on and they have really almost no convictions at all. But a while goes by and all of a sudden they start to say, I'm tired of this. I don't want to do this anymore. And it comes back. And the Lord says, I'm still here. You done with that? You done with uh, falling on the floor? You know? You ready to come back? You ready to come to my arms and I'll comfort you? I mean, you know, it's just it's just so amazing. You get these wicked people, you know, and they, they'll say, just salvation is, is you, you just believe. You, there's no repentance. There's no, you know, change life or whatever after you're saved. It's not, just believe. And you say, okay, well, can somebody that's gay or lesbian or transgender or whatever, can they get saved? No, they're not allowed to get saved. I thought you said it was just belief. You know, weird, weird, totally weird. Turn to First Timothy chapter one. You can come back, no matter what you've done. Again, you say, "Well, I don't know. I don't know." Put your hand up. If you feel breath, you can get saved. You say, "Well, uh, yeah, but you wouldn't say that if you knew what I've done in my life." 
remember I ran in, ran into this guy this one time. We were out going door to door, and and uh, and we said about you know, if you died today, would you go to heaven or hell? He said I'd go to hell. We said, how do you know? He said I know I'd go to hell. Things I've done. We said well we could tell you how to be saved. He said no, I don't want to hear it. He said uh, the things I've done I don't need to, I don't need to know where I'm going when I die. I know I'm going to hell and I know I deserve it and I'm going to go. We said but you don't have to. Yeah I I don't want to hear it. Don't want to hear it. Never could get a word in edgewise with the guy. Try to give him a track. No, no, I don't want it. It's foolish. It's foolish. First Timothy chapter 1, verse 8. But we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man. In other words, you don't have to live keeping the Ten Commandments and keeping a whole bunch of laws to stay saved. Nope. The law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind. What did we read over in Romans chapter 1? It lines up. They're defiling themselves. You see? Defile themselves with mankind. For men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, that's who the law is made for. Well, what's the point of that? Okay, the law condemns us. The Bible condemns the sin that you're doing. Verse 11. According to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust, and I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Well, Paul must have been a really good guy, huh? Keep reading. Who was before a blasphemer. See, watch out for blaspheming the Holy Ghost. Paul blasphemed. He didn't go to hell. Don't fall for this uh, unpardonable sin thing. I see these dumb atheists, you know, and they're like, I'll blaspheme the Holy Ghost and then I'll be guaranteed it, uh, you know, going to hell. Sorry, no. You can still get saved. You can't blaspheme the Holy Ghost. Paul was a blasphemer, and he got saved, and God used him to write a huge portion of the New Testament. He's actually the example for Christians today. Kind of funny, you know. But let's continue. Who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly and unbelief. He was a lost man. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Hmm. Interesting. Continue reading. Howbeit for this cause I obtained mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering, for a pattern to them which should live hereafter excuse me, which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Now unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. What's the point of the law? What's the point of all this condemnation of being judged, you know, and all this stuff? Um, it's to help you to realize you're a sinner. And the only way that you're going to get into heaven is through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. He died on the cross and he shed his blood and that blood can wash away all those sins. So that... Things that you did when you were reprobate, where you said, hey, you know what? I don't even want to think about God anymore. I don't want to retain God in my knowledge. I'm going to go out. I'm going to do, you know, if it feels good, I'm going to do it. You know what? All that stuff that you did, you can come back to God right now. I can tell you right now, if you were watching this video, God is speaking to you. And I'm not talking about me. Me, you know, <laughs> I'm not God. God has put you here watching this video. All right. I'm not going to tell you to go to church. I'm not going to tell you where Sunday best or tithe to this ministry or whatever else. Uh-uh. No. Get your relationship between you and God figured out. Understand this book condemns the sins that you do. Those bad things, those wicked things that you've done. This book condemns it. But this book offers a solution. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Are you a sinner? Have you been involved in sodomy? The gay lifestyle. Are you a uh, them that defile themselves with mankind? Have you defiled yourself? 
Have you ruined your life? You can get saved. Don't let anybody tell you that, well, if you've been turned over to a reprobate mind, you can't ever come back. That's not true at all. That's a lie. Okay? Paul was a blasphemer. And he also killed Christians. But he obtained mercy because he did it ignorantly in unbelief. A lot of things that you've done, when you say, God don't speak to me anymore, and you go out and you do your own thing, you go into that reprobate mind time, you know, you're doing things in ignorance because God's not guiding you. God will guide lost people. I've seen it. I've seen lost people where God, I mean, I remember we were at a grocery store one time, just to tell you a little story to kind of prove my point. And my wife takes a gospel track and goes over and there's an ATM machine and she goes boom and puts it on the ATM machine. And she literally steps back in line with me and this young woman in front of us. And she's standing there and she goes, oh, oh I don't have the money you know, for this. And she turns around. I mean, this is like probably five seconds after my wife puts the track down. She steps back. This woman goes, oh, I don't have the money. And she turns around and she goes and picks up the gospel track. She goes, huh, you know, I wonder what this is. And she shows it to the woman at the cash register and she goes, I wonder what this is. And the woman's like, I'm not sure. You know, and she was kind of smiling. She was a Mennonite woman. She's, you know, I don't know if she saved or lost or I have no idea. But, you know, she was, she kind of like smiled and looked over at us and just kind of like, you know, she knew what it was. It was a gospel track. And this woman, she goes, Lost woman, tattoos, you know, the whole deal and everything. She goes, maybe I'm supposed to take this. She's like, I'm going to take this home and read it. That's what she said. God will start to speak to you as a lost person. And he will manifest himself to you. And he will say, hey, look at that over there. That wasn't, that didn't evolve. That didn't happen by chance. Hey, there's a, Scripture sign there. Hey, there's a gospel tract. Hey, there's a this. Hey, there's a that. And that can happen after years and years and years of being in that reprobate mind, of just living in ignorance and just doing your own thing. That's how it happens. Finally, we're going to go back to the Old Testament. Isaiah 55. See, what you have here, if you're new to this whole thing, this is a Bible-believing ministry. I don't stand here and share my opinions without any Scripture. Uh, when I share my opinions or stories, personal things from my past, it's I always go back to the Scriptures as your final authority. Isaiah 55, verses 6 through 7. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. You breathing? You can still seek him. So Brian, I've I've done some really bad things that you're breathing, you can still seek him. Have you lived as a reprobate for years and years and years? Are you far away from where God wanted you to be? You can come back. His blood can wash away your sins, every single thing, and you get a new start. Yeah, but you don't know. Let me let me just say something here quickly. He said, well, you don't understand the bad things I've done and the, and the perverted stuff and the, and the acts and the, and the things I've said and, the, and how much I blaspheme the Lord. God's watched man for 6,000 years now, approximately, according to the Scriptures. God has looked down on man and He's watched him. Billions and billions and billions of men. He knows every single man, woman and child that has ever lived and knew all of their thoughts and heard every word that they've ever said. Um, do you think anything that you've done can shock a God like that? He knows the capabilities of your body. You're not going to shock Him. Okay? You can make Him mad. You can make Him angry. You reject His Son. But uh, what you've done in your life, you're not going to shock God. You can come to Him and be saved. Seek ye the Lord while He may be found. As long as you're living, you can seek Him. Call ye upon Him while He is near. Call upon Him. God, please show me the truth. I want to know. If you understand the Gospel, you believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins, call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. Just get down, pray, whatever, however you know how to pray. Just 
God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I know I'm a sinner. I know I've, I've messed up. I believe Jesus' death on the cross can pay for my sins. I believe that that blood that He shed can wash my sins away. God, I want a new life. I want out of this life that I've been living, this mess. Please, God, save me. He'll do it. Verse 7, Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Now I'm a dispensational preacher. In other words, I say, well, okay, Old Testament things doctrinally are not all for us today because we're in the New Testament. There are things that changed, right? Certainly. And I would look and I'd say, okay, you be careful about getting things from the Old Testament. But in this case, you look at this thing, you say, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord for he will, and he will have mercy upon him and, and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. If that was true in the Old Testament, when there was no blood atonement of Jesus Christ to pay for your sins completely, how much truer is it for today? You see, Jesus Christ died to pay for sins. He died for sinners. All you have to do is come to Him and believe what He did on the cross by an act of faith and call upon Him to be saved. He'll save you. Just talk to Him. He's your Creator. He's manifesting things to you. He's trying to get you saved. He doesn't want to send you to hell. Hell was created for the devil and his angels. And those that reject Jesus Christ are going to end up there. Call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. That's what you do. Ask Him to save you. And He will. So just saw it there in verse 6. You compare it to Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 13, you're going to see it there. Same thing. Calling upon the name of the Lord to be saved. I mean, when your Creator made you, He made you in a way that you should be able to have a relationship with Him. You know how I have a relationship with my wife? I talk to her. Well, I'm, I'm married, but I never talk to my wife. I don't ever speak to her. It doesn't make any sense. You have relationships with people through word of mouth. You talk to them. You can talk to your Creator. You can call upon Him, and He'll save you. You see? So this question that comes up and says, uh, well, if somebody's been turned over to a reprobate mind, uh, they can't get saved anymore. Um, that's a lie. God can save anybody. There's no sin that's so great that God, right now, there's no sin that's so great that God will say, sorry, I can't help you. Please get your salvation sorted out between you and God. Uh, whatever you've done, whatever, however horrible, whatever bad things you've done, God will save you. I know He will. Okay? So, that's the answer to uh, the brother out there that asked a question. A uh, reprobate mind does not mean permanently lost. Right? You see the, the people that are there in that list, and then you see them later on, they're getting saved. Okay? Things change when they get saved, but um, they can get saved. So don't ever fall for the lie that somebody's been turned over to a reprobate mind. It's a permanent thing. They'll never get saved. That's not true. So that is going to be it. Thank you very much for watching.